Hello folks, today we're going to show you how to fold and unfold the KM440 or 448. These handles work out well to help aid in unhooking it. It comes with the safety chains. You want the chains to stay connected to the vehicle. Very important, once you lift this pin up, that you put the latch back down. You do not want to leave the latch in the up position or it might damage your unit. So as soon as you unhook it, put it back into this position. With the bar, it aids in helping you be able to move the infrared around for the folding and unfolding. When you get to this point, your assistant will grab it from the underneath side and help you lower it down. He'll grab his bar. I've still got this one in my hand. And we'll simply walk it backwards. Stopping in the middle. We both want to look inside of the unit and make sure that everything is in working order. Once you inspect your blanket, you continue to walk it backwards and unfold it. As you notice, I moved and went down such as this versus trying to go all the way with my back. It makes it easier to fold and unfold and easier on your back. Now that you have your KM440 or 448 unfolded, this is the time that you will remove your horseshoe pin and put it in this slot. As soon as you remove it, put it in the slot. I don't want anybody to set it down, forget it, where it goes. It's got two places, either in the bracket to keep the caster from going back and forth, or right there. This allows you to wheel the infrared around however you need to. We consider this the back side of the infrared. In order to fold and unfold the unit, the casters have to be swung out to the back with this locking horseshoe in position. It's really the only time that you put it there is during the folding and unfolding process. Regarding the front casters, those need to be on the side. Once it's folded and unfolded, or once I fold it back up again, I'll show you exactly what I mean. To move your caster on this side, if you've been using the unit where it's hot, by all means, you need to have leather gloves. This infrared is putting out 1800 degrees of heat. The heat comes around here. It definitely warms up this material. The reason you want to move your caster side to side is that you don't want to roll through what you've just heated up. So as this unit set up on this side, you're going to be moving your infrared forward and backwards, not side to side. You never want to roll through what you've just heated. To turn on the KM440 or 448, you've got three 30 pound cylinders. If it's a brand new unit and a brand new bottles, they come from the factory uh, full of air. So your very first full, you must make sure that the propane supplier purges your tank of the air and fills it with propane. If they try to put propane in the tanks with all that air, it's not going to work. You want to make sure you turn your propane bottles on slowly, not to activate the safety shutoff valve. You don't need to open it up three turns, one, one and a half turns is fine. If you do hear a click, simply turn your bottles off, wait to hear a click and turn it back on. Again, that's the safety shutoff valves that they put inside the new tanks. Once your propane bottles are on, you can come over here, turn your key on, you'll hear the fan turn on, you'll see that I have a full 12 volts. 
select your zones by turning on the zones to press the green button I am now heating the asphalt you notice that I have my gauge over here this is showing my propane tank pressure bottle pressure and this is showing that I'm in the heating cycle after the first heat of initial 45 seconds you will see this needle peg down it'll take 20 seconds and it'll turn back on at that point it will heat for 30 seconds on 20 seconds off currently right now I'm only heating up zones 2 and 4 which you'll see a dividing pin welded right here all the way to the outside that is zones 2 and 4 from this point over that way this is a three foot by four foot zones for one and three as you can see it pegged down give it 15 20 seconds it'll peg back up to do the automatic igniting I am now heating asphalt again at the end of the day, when you're all through heating, I like to turn off your propane bottles. So I'll close off my cylinders. And if you watch this needle, it'll peg down. It's showing me that I no longer have any propane in the line. I'll turn my key off and that fan is gonna run automatically for two minutes. This is just at the end of the day, the last heat. I like to purge the system of all the propane in it. Over here, daily maintenance, because this is our deep cycle battery charger. It has a built-in charging system in it. When it needs a charge, it'll take a charge. So if this is in your barn or shop, please make sure that you keep it plugged in at all times. Again, just like your boat, if it needs a charge, it's gonna take a charge. Folks, earlier I talked about the importance of making sure that you put your latch down. As you can see, there is not any clearance but an inch here. So if this was in the up position, not locked down, we would definitely be poking a hole through the top of the infrared here. Another thing that I wanted to point out is this trailer tongue is actually depressing what we call the safety switch so that there's no way that this infrared can operate when it's in the towing position. Another question that we get at times is that, hey, my trailer, it's, it's got some scratch paint. At the end of the axle, the chassis here, that is used to aid in the folding and unfolding of your KM440 or 448. So when you see paint marks wearing here, that's totally normal. To fold and unfold, now we're going to fold back up this KM440. My wheels is aligned. I will drop the horseshoe. Again, to keep the caster from rolling back and forth. Come back over here. I'll grab my trusty assistant light. Bend over, count it one, two, three, go. Mike will go towards the back end. Again, I like to use these rods, put it in here. This helps me push down as well as maneuver the infrared. One, two, three, push down. This gives me much more stability, capability of steering and turning. Put it on the hitch, close it down. Put the pin back in position. And what I like to do is just slip on it a few times to make sure that it is on there, locked up. Go ahead and put your safety chains back on. Plug in your lights. Replace your bar. Good to go. Something that I wanted to point out that I touched base with earlier to fold and unfold your infrared, 
this is how your casters have to be. If you can come on over here, I'll point out to the folks. Again, this is what we call the bottle side or back. This is how your casters have to be. The bottom half or the front side, your casters have to be out there. Again, very important that you use your horseshoe. If you're trying to unfold and fold this without your horseshoes, your casters are gonna be wobbling and traveling on you. That is what it looks like. The daily maintenance for your KM440, 448, uh, every other day or so, depending on how often you're using it, you wanna grease your casters. There is a greaser over here, as well as this one right here and one here. The cleaner you keep your casters, the easier it is to maneuver it on asphalt. So if you ever have a buildup of asphalt on there, simply take a putty knife and scrape it off. Again, you're producing 1800 degrees of heat, so you wanna keep everything moving as freely and flowing as possible. The only other really maintenance issue you have to do, or not issue, but is charge your battery. I can't stress enough to keep it plugged in. If you're not using it, it'll not take a charge. It'll only take a charge when it needs a charge. So even in storage, just keep it plugged in. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, 800-492-1757.